So, in this video, we're talking about the good old lean back to avoid strikes. This move has been getting so much more popular in MMA. Originally, you see it a lot in tire boxing, especially when someone was coming in with that nice high tall roundhouse kick, coming up, boom, and throw that roundhouse kick. You would see people leaning back and getting out of the way. So, it's about time more and more people in MMA started using it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it and also a few strikes you can land coming off of it. Like I just said at the beginning very quickly there about uh, a lot of people use it to avoid the roundhouse kicks. Now you can avoid uh, use it to avoid hooks, even straight punches. Someone throws a straight punch at you and you lean back just out of the way of it, you can come back in and count with your strikes. The only problem with MMA is a lot of people think if you're leaning back, you're very acceptable for maybe double leg takedowns or takedowns in that sense. But I promise you, if someone's throwing a big head kick, there's no way they're never going to be able to set up a takedown. So if you can pull away from them, it is going to be a brilliant way how to defend it rather than blocking it and taking it on the arms especially with these small gloves in tire boxing when they're using slightly bigger gloves and you take it on the glove, it's a bit less impact. With these such small gloves, you're more likely to get hit on the arm. Then kicks are gonna wear on you. So, let's get back to how you actually do the move, how you actually do the pullback. So, as the strike is coming around towards you, this is very important. You wanna step back on your rear leg. So you want to step back and then from there, keeping this hand up to protect your chin, you want to lean back. This shoulder comes up and you tuck your chin down. This arm uses a counterbalance so it comes down and then as you step back forward, it comes back up forward. Now the reason why you want to do all that, because just say if you mistime it and you come out and at least you've got that hand up by your chin, to be able to catch either the punch or the kick. And with this side, at least you've got your shoulder up. It might hit you on the head, but that's not as bad as getting hit on the chin, of course. Don't get me wrong, of course you can still get knocked out, getting hit on the temple, getting hit on the forehead. It's not perfect, but nothing is perfect in fighting. At least you're trying to be defensively responsible and like I said, if you've got that shoulder up, protecting your chin, at least you're not going to get hit on the chin where you are so much more likely to get knocked out. Now, like I said, you want to step back on this foot because as well, that can bring you back just as quick. And the other reason why as well, because if you step back, uh, sorry, just lean back without stepping, you've got nowhere else really you can go apart from without then stepping backwards because you're going to be off balance. Where at least if you step back and lean back and then you can't come back forward again because they're coming up with more strikes, maybe they missed the roundhouse kick and then they shot them with a side kick to the face, you can lean back and then just step back with it. So then you're out of range. So if you see I'm really close here, as I lean back and step back, then as I step back again, I'm completely out of range. Where before I was here, where if I just lean back, it's hard for me to then step that leg back like that. Yeah? So you want to step that leg back, and if I don't need to, I could just come back up. So we do that one more time. So I'm stepping back, and I can step that leg back up and come up in my guard. But if I was leaning back, it's a little bit harder for me to do that. I suppose that is the way you would do it. You would lean and then just skip back. That would probably be your best bet. But it's good to lean back. And as well, like I said, it's not just a defensive thing, it's that to push back up from. So, you can just lean back out of the way, but I really like to try and step out of the way and lean back. Step, boom, get that more explosive thing in. As well, you don't have to lean as far back. The closer you are to the person, especially if they're, say, doing a kick, depending on what they're throwing, you do want more of a lean. Yeah, you want to lean right back. If you're avoiding punches, you can get away with just more almost stepping back. So it's not almost like a lean, you're more just stepping out the way of it. So we've got the 
kind of like two versions. So we've got the stepping out of the way and then back in. Stepping out of the way, back in. Or, like I say, if you're really close and they're coming up, you've got more of the lean. Throw your lean in out of the way. Keeping these hands up, keeping responsible, yeah? Stepping that back leg back, boom, say look, I get more, I can avoid and get my angle on my back. I don't have to be as flexible when I step that back leg back. That's another reason why it is good to step that back leg back. Again, you can't get away with it. I have some people who are not bothered with stepping in the back leg, they're just literally putting back like that and coming back. If you can, practice stepping that back leg back to get right out of the way of it. Now we've mastered that lean back, we want to come back with our own counter. Now, a lot of the times the reason why you counter someone, um, or best off to use for a counter, should I say, you want to use a power strike. If you've done all that effort into countering someone, I wouldn't just want to counter and then just come back with a sneaky little jab, yeah? Unless I was going to put something on the end of that jab as well. Really, I this, I, I, Ideally, like I said, say they throw a big hook, they've missed, hopefully they're going to be off balance, they're going to be exposed. If they throw a big kick, they've missed, they've not expected it, they're going to be exposed. So, the obvious best one is just your rear cross. So if you've leaned back, and then you want to come back in, boom, to explode in with that rear cross. So again, step back out, bang, come back in, land that rear cross. Again, step back out, boom, back in, land that rear, rear cross. Make sure, keep that shoulder up, Nice and high, protecting the chin and keeping this other hand up. So if I show it from this angle, so there's a step back and then bang. Keeping this hand up, keeping that arm up, rotating a bit, helps lift the shoulder up a little bit while I'm just coming through like that. So if I go through like that, I'll turn, turn my arm up, lift that shoulder up, yeah? Nice power. Bang! Straight through the middle. Now, let's just say, you're more of a kicker, you like doing your kicks. Well, that's even more reason why you want to use that step back, to use that as a spring to come up with your round kick, yeah? So let's just say they throw a big kick. This is getting more into the tire boxing, more sort of style. You'll see this a lot more than you will in MMA. But like I say, I have seen them pull back a lot more in MMA lately. And it's got to score really well and it's got to look good. So, just say they throw the big head kick, you step out the middle of the way, you step out, boom, come up with your own round kick. So again, step out, boom, come up for your own round kick. Now, basically the point is, most of the power is always going to come through this side, yeah? So no matter what you step back with, the count is nearly always going to come from this side, because that's where you're going to come in with the power. So you can do a knee, no, I can step in, jump in with an elbow. Just if you are gonna step back then out and then throw the jab, just make sure you follow it up with a cross. So you can always come in, step back, bam, bam. nice quick one two. So again, step back, bam, bam. nice quick one two. But ideally, you just want to out way, boom, come in with your big power strike, hopefully get the knockout, finish the fight. Now there is one more other thing you could always do from this. If I suppose you're a wrestler or something along that sense or you want to get the fight to the ground, is you could use that momentum to shoot him for a takedown. So as you shot in, you lean back like that, and then you can explode forward, shoot me at a takedown. So it drops that knee. So again, yeah, so shoot back and boom, shoot him for that takedown. I must admit, I don't quite know how well that would work. I guarantee you, some people will be able to pull it off, but you're not going to be able to pull it off unless you practice it or drill it. So maybe give that one a practice. I admit, I put my hands up. I've not done that one myself, but we'll try it out <laughs> next time I'm doing a bit of sparring if I get the opportunity to, yeah? So just put it back, and then boom, shooting in for the takedown and getting the takedown as it's in my mind. The reason why, like I said, it could work because a lot of the times they're going to hopefully of overextended, especially if they've missed that punch or keep whatever they decided to throw as you lean back to shoot in. Now, just bearing this in mind, just as I said that, 
Not everyone is always going to commit, yeah? You might get someone, especially if it is just the hands, and they might throw a short little hook or a short little hook, and as you lean back, you might not always get that opportunity, yeah? So also, just back to your your back and retreating, yeah? If obviously you've got your back against the cage, that's gonna be no good. Yes, this move is no good if your back is against the cage. So make sure you never got your back to the cage, always circling off. But it's definitely a good one to start practicing in your arsenal. So keep your hand up, keep that chin tucked, be nice and safe. You're always there just in case something does come back through the middle, yeah? So you can back off. It's not, again, you can't get everything perfect. You've got to sacrifice something. But if the hand's up, it's not got further to travel, yeah? Try not to be one of these too cocky and confident and leave both your hands back unless you're at that level and you know you can get away with it. If you want to learn other defensive techniques, then check out this video somewhere over here. And hopefully, I'll see you all soon. Eesh. Eesh.